Doomers, welcome back. It is time for July favorites. And as I was going through my makeup collection and really digging into things this month, I rediscovered some new favorites and I have some other lifestyle favorites and stuff too. So I'm gonna do all the makeup stuff first and then we'll talk about other things. So first thing is the Naked Skin um, by Urban Decay, the foundation and the concealer. This is what I have on right now. These are fantastic. I love the finish. They last a really long time. This concealer is really amazing. I have these, let's see, I have the foundation in shade 3.5 and I have the concealer in medium light. I just, I love these. One thing about the foundation that's really nice is depending on what type of brush that you use, you can get really different applications. Um, if I want a lighter application, I want kind of just a, a light to medium coverage, I use the Urban Decay Optical Blurring Blush brush not blush but I use this brush and it just gives me kind of a light medium coverage if I want a little bit more coverage with it I don't have to use more product I can just use a denser brush and I use this Tarte foundation brush um, I got this in a set on QVC but you know if you use a denser brush then you can get more coverage without using more product and I think that's absolutely fantastic and they both last a really long time and they hold up very very well in humid weather um, a couple of other makeup things, two eyeshadow palettes that I rediscovered this month. The Kat Von D Esperanza palette, which is was limited edition. You can't get it from her website anymore, but it is available on Amazon. And I'll put a link below where you can get it. But this is just phenomenal. These colors are just amazing. I love this purple and this green, oh, these colors just, I mean, just like Kat Von D products do, they just pop. And you can see, I mean, there's just, there's so much pigmentation there. And I've gotten a lot of really fun looks with it. And it lasts all day. They don't really fade very badly at all, like a lot of eyeshadows do. And even without a primer, they last for a really long time. The other eyeshadow palette that I rediscovered this month was the Too Faced Romantic Eye. And you can't get this anymore except for, I did find it for someone that asked me on Instagram the other day, so I will link that down below. I don't remember what the boutique was called, but I know she had at least 12 left, which is not a lot, but you know maybe she has more. Um, but this is just absolutely beautiful, and you can tell that it is well loved. And that is what I have on my eyes right now. One of the things that I like about this particular Too Faced eyeshadow palette, and one of the things I like about a lot of the Nine Pan Too Faced eyeshadow palettes is you can do a really simple look, or you can do something more complicated. For example, um, a lot of times what I would do is I would put uh, Bokeh Toss just all over my lid, First Dance, which is this really nice dark purple on my outer corner and blend it into the crease, and then cut the cake right here on my lid and that's what those colors look like. So just really pretty, great for just every day. But there's also a lot of ways that you can do much more complicated looks. Um, this color I do is a really great transition color. Um, Soulmates is a really great inner corner highlight. There's just lots of things that you can do with this palette and I absolutely, absolutely love it. I think this is what I am going to take on vacation with me. So let's see, one more makeup. Well, I have a couple more makeup things. I rediscovered this Fiona Styles Ultra Smooth Waterproof Eye Defining Pencil in Coventry. This kind of got to the bottom of my pencils. I usually use a gel or a liquid liner on my upper lash line, and then I use a pencil or a gel pencil to do my tight line and my lower lash line or, or my lower water line. And this is just, it's so creamy and it's so smooth and it's so dark. And I'm going to have to get a makeup remover to take that off because it's just not gonna come off. It actually stays in my water line for 
quite a good amount of time. It does not stay all day, but it does stay on my tight line and my lower lash line all day. It stays in my water line, I would say, for probably about six hours, which is more than I can say for almost anything I've tried in my waterline. Things just don't stay in my waterline, so I'm really impressed with that. A couple of lip products. What I have on my lips right now is Kat Von D's. This is one of the older ones. Um, this is in Cathedral, and I absolutely love this color. And it kind of got stuck on my display and I forgot about it. But it's really just a great color all year round. And so I'm really glad that I rediscovered that. And then another lip product that I have dismissed over and over and over again because it has almost no color. This summer has been my absolute best friend. For some reason this summer, I have been having a lot of problems with dry lips. And I usually never have problems with dry lips, except for in the winter. And I really don't have a big problem in the winter either. Um, I'm one of those people that, you know, I cannot use a lip product you know, to moisturize or anything for months and not notice. But for some reason this summer I have been having a little bit of problem with dry lips. And this is uh, L'Oreal's The Balm. And this color is 518 Tender Mauve. And the reason why I have finally discovered love for this product is because it is so moisturizing. It's like having a lip balm on. It lasts about as long as a lip balm, so you do need to reapply it a lot. But it's it feels kind of like having a lip treatment on, but that has a little bit of color. So it's definitely a your lips but glossy uh, type of color. And I've just really been enjoying it this past month. Okay, uh, skincare. I got this in, um, Ipsy. No, I got this in my Sephora Play Box this month, and I really never would have tried this had I not gotten the box. It's the First Aid Beauty Skin Rescue Deep Cleanser with Red Clay. And I've tried a couple of things from this brand before, and they just didn't really work for my skin type. And when I tried this, I was blown away. It's definitely a one-stepper, which is what I like when I go to cleanse my face. When I jump in the shower at night, I've usually had a tremendously long day. Every now and then I get a short day, but I've usually had a tremendously long day. And I have about 20 pounds of makeup to remove as well as you know clean myself, and I just really wanna to go to bed. So what I look for in a cleanser is can it remove my makeup and cleanse my face? And I always do a toner test afterwards when I try something new and do a toner and see how much makeup residue it, or you know dead skin cells or anything like that is left on my cotton swab and there's really almost nothing at all left with this and that really pleases me it feels good it smells nice so I'm I'm kind of sold on this um, okay that is it for makeup stuff so a couple of lifestyle actually I just really have one lifestyle favorite and then we will do books um, and you guys might laugh at me but <laughs> Pokemon Go. So my oldest son, Christopher, who is 11, has liked Pokemon for a really long time. He plays the games, he has like the how to draw books, he draws them, he's drawn me some for my office. He really likes Pokemon. And so when I heard that this was coming out, I thought, well, this is fantastic for him. It'll get him out, it'll get him, you know, out playing around, get him out moving around the neighborhood. And you know, so I downloaded it to kind of see what it's about so I could tell him. Well, we ended up going out to our city park. Our city is only about a little less than 9,000 people, so it's not very big. So we went to our city park and there's all kinds of people playing and we just had a really great time talking to, you know, new people and running into friends and we just, you know, it was just a really great time and everybody's playing together and working together and yelling out, hey, there's this over here and here. And it was just, it was really, really fun. Um, it's like treasure hunting. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. It is really fun, but I will tell you, it will eat your data like crazy. So if you don't have a really good data plan, then you might not want to download it because you will, um, if you like treasure hunting and you have kids that want to go out and do it, then you might, you know, eat up all your data. And if you do download it and you like it, you might do like we did and find yourself in a graveyard 
in the middle of the night because we heard that there were certain Pokemon that you can only get in graveyards. Um, unfortunately, I think that the way that the game works is there's more Pokemon when there's more people and there's usually no one else in the graveyard in the middle of the night and our graveyards, um, we actually have two graveyards really close by that are supposedly haunted. Um, they both have witches. One has a witch's grave and it actually, you know, it's, it's like a concrete, just like, it's not even a slab. It's like a rounded concrete thing. And supposedly there's a witch buried there. Um, and we were out there at 1230 at night and there were no witches. And then we went to another cemetery that supposedly it has these like glowing things because of witches. And we didn't see anything, but it was really fun to go out with the family and the kids to a graveyard in the middle of the night and see if we could find witches and Pokemon. We didn't find either. <laughs> so um, that is it for lifestyle favorites this month. And then Lastly, books. I've kind of taken a break from some of the heavier, I won't say heavier things I've been reading. I've been reading a lot of thrillers lately and one of the things that I do that is really bad is I'll look at something and I'll go, oh, I can't read that because it's, you know, it's not literature. You know, I, I have a master's degree in English and so I think I need to read like the highfalutin stuff. You know, I need to be reading Shakespeare. I need to be reading Chaucer. Um, I need, you know, I need to be reading things like that. And so this, usually in the summer, I'm very good about giving myself permission to read things that I wouldn't consider to be, um, you know, they're not going to be remembered 200 years from now. Nobody's going to be like talking about these in English classes. Um, but you never know, they might. So the first one, I just finished this. This is by Kathy Rikes. It's Bones Never Lie, and my camera doesn't want to focus on it because it's like all shiny. So, here. We'll focus on it if I hold it back here. Okay, there we go. Um, Bones Never Lie. Kathy Rikes is um, the real life person that Temperance Brennan is based off of on the Bones TV show. And Bones is one of my favorite TV shows of all times. I've seen every single episode except for the very last two of season 11 which are on my DVR I just haven't had a chance to watch them yet and I heard that Zach comes back and I love Zach but um, Ryan and I started from the very beginning binge watching the show and it got me back in the mood and I remember that I had the last two books that she had written that I hadn't read so I just finished this and I started speaking in bones that's the last one I think that she's written so I've read all of those books and if I mean, I give them three stars out of five. They're they're fast reads. They're around three, four hundred pages a piece. But if you like the show Bones, then you'll like these. Something bad always happens to her. Um, Temperance Brennan is in it, but she's a, a vastly different character. Booth isn't in it, but there are other gentleman characters that are very interesting. So um, this is this is the book's sort of. Um, you know her fantasy world you know different characters and I think the TV show is more based on her actual life and then the second book is one that I've read several in this series and we were at the used bookstore the other day and I saw these and I thought oh my gosh I can't believe that I stopped reading those and so I picked up the first three and I want to start again but this is People of the Fire and again it's not going to focus on it People of the Fire it's by W. Michael Gear and Kathleen O'Neill Gear um, I think the first one is actually People of the Wolf um, but I already this is the one that I'm going to read next and what they are is they are, they go back to the very beginning of time to the Native Americans and the things that they believed and the way that they lived and the interactions that they had. And it's just, it's very interesting. It's fiction, it's not real, but it is based on the way that people thought that things might have happened way back when, when they were, you know, crossing over the land bridge or, you know, anything like that. So People of the Wolf is in a cold region, People of the Fire is in a hot region, and there's a whole bunch of different books. So if you like historical fiction, if you're interested in, you know, Native American stories, definitely pick these up and check them out. You can usually find those at your used bookstore. That's where I picked mine up. 
and they're absolutely great. So that is all my favorites for July. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the great videos that I have coming up. And if you like favorites videos, give this a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below because I really love talking to you guys. I have a lot of fun just with the interactions back and forth. And I talk to a lot of you guys over on Instagram too. So follow me over there. I have all my links to my social media down below. So I will see you next time. Bye.